Hi everyone, Adam here. In the last video, we learned a little bit about what happens when we add a new metric, and we looked at data integrity. And in the video before that one, we set up these filters that we can use to manipulate the historical data for the athlete that we pick up here. And in this video, we are going to set up two charts. We're going to set up the environment to create two dynamic charts. To start that process, I'm going to highlight all these cells here and merge them together. This will be our first drop down, and maybe we'll color that dark green, and we'll copy that and paste it right here. So now we have two different areas where we're going to pick a test, and then we'll have a chart beneath it that represents the data for that test over time for the date range that we pick, and it'll include the sessions that we want to include. The first thing that we're going to need to do here is create a dropdown of all of our tests. And if you followed along in the previous series where we developed this dashboard, you'll be familiar with this process. Go to Data, Data Validation, and we want to list from a range, and we will reject the input, or in other words, if the test, if we type in something that does not match one of our test names, it won't allow us to do that. And the list of our tests are going to come from something that we already developed. And we will, and you would have done that in your videos when you, uh, during your creation of this athlete player card. We can click on these cells here and select our data range. In our admin area, we have all of our tests and metrics here. So we'll select cell E2. And then we'll do colon E, which says, give me a list of everything from cell E2 all the way to the bottom of column E. And you'll see we have a lot of metrics here. A lot of them are, are for you um, to fill in, but we'll click OK, save. Now if we go back to our testing dashboard, we'll have a drop down list here of everything that's in that column. And we can pick it. Now, I'll make the font white and we'll make it bold and we'll put it in the center horizontally and vertically. And I probably shouldn't have copy and pasted um, over here then. So we'll copy this now and paste it over the screen. And now we have two drop down lists. I'll just pick two for now, two actual metrics for now. So maybe it's body weight and maybe this one is, I don't know, VO2 max. And now let's start to set up our data for these charts. So let's go to our chart data area. And if you followed along um, previously, we'll have all of these things already developed for other charts that we've built. And all the way over to the right, we're going to create this, I guess, this new kind of area um, and make it dark gray. We'll call this testing, make it white. We'll call this uh, Histor I'll just call it historical testing. I can't see it. Historical testing. Make it bold and I'll make it white so I can actually see it. And now we now there's some sort of segregation for you guys where all right, here's all the stuff we did for our testing dashboard. And a lot of this stuff is going to be the same. Um, we're going to have to get a lot of the same information for the for this historical testing thing. And I want to do it again just in case people did not um, get the selected player and their position and all those things for the testing dashboard. So let's actually copy what we have here and you can see this if, if you haven't um, if you haven't done this already. We're, we want to get the player that we selected and we want them to show up here. To do that we can go equals and go to our testing dashboard and select the player that we pick here and click enter and then we'll show up. The purpose of bringing people's names and relevant information into here is so that we don't have to go back and forth in between sheets or in between tabs to do calculations. We can also get their position, which is not tied to the dashboard, and that's fine. Their team, that's fine. The selected session, we don't necessarily need, but what we do need is we need our start date, or we can just say date, date range maybe. And the first cell will be our start date, so we'll go equals, go to our testing dashboard, and this is the first date that we select in our date range. So we'll select that cell and click enter. 
and we'll go equals and select our end date, which in our testing dashboard is right here. Click enter. Now these are the dates that we selected in our dashboard. And now we're going to do something a little bit different, but it's important. So let's remove this selected cohort thing. Let's move it down. This is going to be our selected, uh, what do you call them? I'll just say events. I don't really know what to call them right now. And what we're going to do here is in our testing dashboard, what we're going to say is we're going to say if this checkbox is checked, which means that it is true. See how we check it and it says true up here. If we uncheck it, it'll say false. That's all this checkbox is, 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 is it is a true false um, data point that we can navigate with by checking or unchecking the checkbox. We want to say, if this checkbox is true, then say training camp. If it's false, then don't say anything. And we'll say the same thing with in season. If this checkbox is true, say in season. If not, then don't say anything. And that is so that we can bring in our selections into that area, right? So if it's selected or if it's checked, then we want to bring it in. If it's not selected, then we don't care about it. And you'll see what I mean in a later video. So let's go back to our admin. Oh, not our admin, our chart data. And we'll start with equals if, open parenthesis. Our logical expression is if, in our testing dashboard, this cell, this checkbox cell equals true, comma, then we want this word, our training camp, to come in. Or we could even just say, quote, training camp, and end the quote, comma. If that's not true, if this is not true, then we will do quote, quote, or blank, and close the parentheses and click enter. Right now we have a blank, but if we go to our testing dashboard and we check this box, we go back to our chart data, now we'll see the word training camp show up. Now this is the most important thing. Whatever this is, whatever this word is that goes here, it needs to align with your testing data. So we have training camp and we have in season. The purpose of us doing this is so that we can check and uncheck boxes in our dashboard that then tie into this data here so that we only get the, the um, associated values with the things that we check off. So it's very important that whatever you're checking off or not checking off, those names align with what you call your season phases. Again, it might be fall or spring. Um, I'm not sure, but they, the names need to match up. So we have training camp. The next thing we have is in season. Those are the only different phases I'm collecting. You might have another one called off season. Uh, you could have a number of them. You could have 10 of them. And if you had 10 of them, you would have 10 different checkboxes with 10 different items. And you would perform this calculation that we have here 10 times. And you would use that in the formula that we're going to use later. And you'll see how that works. So an important note is as you go through this, try to make it your own. Okay, listen to what I'm saying and manipulate it so that it makes sense to you in your environment or else it's going to be a big struggle going back and trying to figure out how to manipulate it in a way that makes sense for you. So if you need to, take a minute, think about this and organize your data accordingly and perform the calculations in a way that makes sense to you. Now that we have this formula, we can copy it and we can paste it down here. And click enter but now we need to change a couple of things or actually let's just do it over <laughs> sorry so we'll go equals if open parenthesis if and we go to our testing dashboard if this checkbox now equals true comma quote what do we want it to say well we'll have it say in dash season end quote comma so that's what will happen. If it's true, it'll say in season. If not, what do we want it to do? Let's do quote, quote, or blank. We can close the parentheses and click enter. And now we have a blank cell here. And if we go to our testing dashboard and we check this off, now in our chart data, we have it. One thing that'll happen is whatever you type in here, if you decide, hey, you know what? 
um, in my testing data, I'm actually going to change this instead of training camp. I'm going to call this training camps, and you call and you make that change holistically. What's going to happen is you're going to get errors or things aren't going to show up because the words don't match up. So you just need to be really conscious and cognizant of the fact that this has to match what's going on here. And if you make a change in one place, you'll have to make it here as well. Okay, now we have all of the information that we need. So let's start setting up the data. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a list of dates for this athlete within this date range that we picked in our dashboard. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie the data that we need into those dates so that we can view it in a chart. So right here we'll just say uh, dates for athlete and we'll just make it bold and gray. And the formula that we're going to use to do this, if you watch the prior videos, you'll be familiar with what we've done and we'll use unique and sort and filter all together. If you need refreshers on those, I have Google Sheets tutorials on each of those functions independently, and they might be helpful if, um, if this doesn't make sense to you right away. First, let's get a unique list of dates. So we'll go equals unique, which is the function's name, open the parentheses, and well, where are these dates coming from, or where is this range? It's in our testing data, cell B2, colon B, or all the way down the list. And if we close the parentheses and click enter, now we have a unique list of all of our dates. Now, one thing that could happen is let's go into our testing data and let's sort this by, I don't know, let's sort it by CMJ trial one. And now that we've done that, if we go to our chart data, our date order will change. It is not chronological. And because we want our chart to be in chronological order from earliest uh, to most recent, maybe we should sort this in case we decide to sort our table in a different way that doesn't correspond with the way that these dates should be. To do that, we can add in a sort function. So sort, open parenthesis, and then we do this unique stuff. And we can close the parentheses and click enter. Now, no matter what, our dates will be sorted chronologically, regardless of how we sort our data set here. I'm going to sort this back by date now. Um, and we can go to our chart data. Now, these are all the dates, but these are not all the dates but in this date range. Notice 10, 17, 2020 is showing up here. And our the end of our date range is 12 30 2019. So how we make this only be of it, all these dates to be inside of this date range is we add a function called filter, which adds a filter onto this date range or restricts the number of dates by some piece of criteria. Just like a filter works on our testing data where we can select, um, let's say a team and say, we just want to see the Toon Squad team and click OK. And now all of our all of our other teams are gone except for Toon Squad. That's exactly what we're doing with the filter function. So let's just select all and click OK to bring them back. Now we see the Monstars back in there. So if we go to our chart data, we can add in a filter function after this unique. So we'll go filter, open parenthesis. The range is still this. This is the range for all three of these three things. So we want a unique sorted list of all this stuff, or all of our dates, comma, but when what is true? Well, when condition one is true, which is when the dates, which is testing data B2 to B, are greater than or equal to the start date that we picked in our dashboard, comma, and also, which is condition two, or another piece of criteria, and also when the dates, which we'll just copy from right here, the dates in our data set are less than or equal to the end date that we picked in our dashboard. And now if we click enter, now that, ten, that uh, 2020 date is gone. And if we change the date range in our dashboard, let's say to be to 11-23-2019, let's go 11-23-2019 and click enter, 
and we go to our chart data, now we've lost some more dates, right? So we're controlling the dates that show up for this athlete or the dates in our chart ultimately by the date range in our dashboard. Now, what we're also going to want to do is we're going to want to restrict this date range for when the athlete in our database is equal to the athlete that we picked. The reason for this is because let's say that we have an athlete that was with us from 2017 to 2018. When we select that athlete and we select our date range, let's say it's 2017 through 2018, we might get all of the dates, even if we selected 2017 through 2020, we may get a ton of dates that are in our database that aren't associated with that athlete. And the reason why those dates are there are because the athlete was not with us during those times. And as a result, we'll have a bunch of dates with empty data and it'll look ugly on the chart. There'll be a lot of white space um, for no reason. So the last piece of criteria that we can add is go into our filter formula and we can add another comma, which leads us to condition three. And that condition three or that next condition is when also if we go to our testing data, the athlete's name or A2 colon A is equal to, and we can go back to our chart data and select the athlete's name here, which is the athlete that we pick on our dashboard and click enter. Now, for example, I just want to show you and then I'll end the video for this person. If we go to our testing data, notice they have 11-1-2019 um, data. If we, I'm just going to go to that athlete. So let's clear these and let's go to Laquan James. And let's just um, remove this date for 11-1-2019. Let's remove it so it's gone for that person. And actually, if we undo this and select all of our athletes, we'll notice that 11-1-2019 exists for a lot, of, a lot of them, but not this person. We might even remove all their data. So they weren't even, they weren't around. And if we go to our chart data now, now 11-1-2019 is not there anymore. So that's why it's important to do it by, to filter the dates through the athlete. If we go back to our testing data, I'm just going to undo, I'm going to hold down control and click Z a couple times to add some stuff back in. And now if we go back to our chart data, 11-1-2019 is, is back in there for this athlete. And that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to finish setting up uh, this data, and then we'll create the charts that will be very dynamic in nature. And then we will build out a table of historical database information for the athlete. What I'm going to do, start doing at the end of these videos, is I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. And I want, and I'm going to ask for you to tell me a little bit about yourself so we can all get to know each other a little bit better and, and connect a little more. So for me, my favorite cereal of all time is Reese's Puffs. When they came out with those when I was a kid, it was a game changer. And they're, it is my favorite cereal to this day. In the comments below, I want you to tell me what your favorite cereal of all time is. And I know I'm going to see a lot of Cinnamon Toast Crunch out there. I'm a big fan of it too, so don't worry about that. And I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. And I'm excited to learn a little bit more about each of you. And if you enjoyed this content, please give the video a like and a subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.